Relationships are complex and sometimes confusing because humans are. We're unpredictable, we're annoying, we don't know what we want, we don't know what we're doing. And then we're supposed to merge with another person of this species and somehow work together seamlessly. That's what we're getting into today. So I found that most videos that I see on the topic of relationships focus on things to be aware of in another person and not so much things to be aware of within ourselves. You know, it's easy to point fingers to others, the things that we expect from them or the things that we want from them and the things that are wrong with them. But how about the things with you and with me? I want to focus on both because they're equally important and I specifically want to focus on three ideas or things or whatever you want to call it that I have come to learn. And those things are one, be honest from the beginning, two, don't commit to potential, and three, endings are not failures. And this is going to be a chit chatty video. We are just hanging out, two friends, you and I. You all seem to really enjoy the video that I made similar to this one a while back and I really enjoyed making it, so here we are. So what do I mean by being honest from the very beginning? So we're animals. We see a potential mate and we do what we can to attract them. You know, we may not puff out our chest or lift our arms up like some other species do. Instead, we try to look and behave our very best, you know, as one should. We all like to see that someone is putting in the effort. But there is a difference between putting your best foot forward and putting a foot forward that isn't even yours. So how can a person be honest? So honesty is not about spilling all the tea about your family drama and your bad habit of leaving socks on the floor and your childhood bullies all on the first date. It's simply about not deliberately censoring or manipulating or exaggerating your true self in order to make yourself seem more desirable by pretending to be someone or something that you really aren't. So to provide an example, when you meet someone or when you're with someone, don't be like, yeah, I wake up at 6 a.m. every morning and go for a run and then I go to the animal shelter and volunteer for two hours if you don't do that. Don't tell someone that you are a chocolate person when you are a vanilla person. Don't pretend to be a social butterfly when in reality you are a homebody. Don't say that you are okay with smoking and alcohol if you're not or that their busy work schedule isn't going to be a problem if it is. So as you can see, the honesty train goes both ways. You know, you don't pretend to be something that you're not and you don't pretend to be okay with what someone else is if you aren't. And now why is it so important? So the foundation of a relationship, you know, the tone, the norm, the expectations, the boundaries, those are usually set at the very early stages, at least the very core of it. And if those are based on a false reality, then eventually the facade will fade, the mask will slip, and the relationship will suffer because suppressed desires and ways of being tend to resurface in one way or the other, perhaps in five months or perhaps two years into the relationship. Now, if you feel like you cannot be honest about who you are with someone, you either A, need to work on yourself, and that includes learning to simply accept who you are, to actually become someone that you are proud to be honest about being, or B, you simply are in the wrong company. And now the fuzzy thing about honesty is of course that while you might be fully committed to it, you know, there is no way for you to know if the other person is. You know, some people will be dishonest, some people will lie, and that is simply something that we need to accept as our reality, just don't be one of those people because they always lose in the end. Now moving on to the second idea. So what do I mean by don't commit to potential? You know, sometimes we pretend to be okay with something that a person says or does or is 
because we're hoping or expecting that that specific attribute of theirs will change. And sometimes it can, you know, for example, I'm not typically someone who likes going out too much, but if the person that I was with enjoyed going out more than I did, you know, there's a chance that I would start enjoying it more too. But I would not want them to commit to the idea that that is going to happen. Just like if I meet someone who says that they don't ever want to get married, well, I do, I should not commit to the idea that one day they are going to change their mind. So how do you avoid committing to potential? You ask questions and you honestly evaluate the answers and the actions that follow. You know, acknowledge someone's true colors and decide if their color palette matches with yours. And if it doesn't, be honest, even if it sucks because it might go against what you had hoped and wished for. So basically, don't look for a project to turn into a suitable partner. And now that doesn't mean that you should look for someone who is perfect and that perfectly aligns with you and your life from the very start, because that's not really what reality looks like and we will get to that later. But the person that you are today should align with the person that they are today. You don't align with who they could be or with who you could be. And now on that note, let's talk about expectations and compromise. If you're looking for someone who is going to fit perfectly into the 100 bullet point list that you have made of a dream mate, you'll be searching forever. And if you do happen to stumble upon them, honestly, just run. There will always be things that could be better. There will always be things that are annoying. There will always be different opinions and perspectives and ideas. And there will always be disagreements because we're different people. So let's say that you are 25 and you meet someone who is also 25. It means that you each are bringing 25 years of experiences to the table. And that includes everything from your childhood and your upbringing to every single friendship and relationship that each of you have ever had and all the other things that make up who we are. So it's a beautiful thing, but it's a complicated thing. And this is where compromise comes in. And I think there is a healthy kind of compromise and an unhealthy kind of compromise. You know, there is a compromise that is perfectly reasonable. And then there is the compromise that is unreasonable. And the only people who ultimately decide what those things are, are you and the person that you are with. Now, there are some people that are really reluctant to compromise and I call it under compromise. So things like, I refuse to stop leaving my dirty socks on the floor. It's who I am, accept it or leave it. Or no, I cannot remember to kiss you goodnight every single night, even though I know that it would make you happy. I'm just not that kind of person. And then there is the people who are too prone to compromise where they completely lose themselves. I call that overcompromise. So things like, I'm going to stop talking to everyone in my family so that I can spend all my time with you. And I think what I've learned there is that in any relationship, there will be times when overcompromising is necessary. You know, someone might get sick or lose their job or simply have a few bad days. And there will also be times when someone will undercompromise. You know, someone might just not feel like it or they might be going through something. And that's what a relationship is. You know, there will be ups, there will be downs, there will be highs and there will be lows. And that brings me to my last point, which is that endings are not failures. You know, sometimes things just end. It's part of life. Not all things are forever. Now, does that mean that we failed or that you failed or that they failed or that the relationship failed? Each to their own, but that's not how I see it. You know, sometimes life gives us opportunities to learn and to grow and even just to create memories and stories and we should do the best that we can to learn to embrace it, even if they come in a way that 
we hadn't expected or hoped for. And on that note, let's end this little chat session with a quote that I really, really like. I have my computer here because I don't know it by heart. And I want to read it to you. It is by Emery Allen and it goes, not everything is supposed to become something beautiful and long lasting. Sometimes people come into your life to show you what is right and what is wrong, to show you who you can be, to teach you to love yourself, to make you feel better for a little while, or to just be someone to walk with at night and spill your life to. Not everyone is going to stay forever, and we still have to keep on going and thank them for what they have given us. And that was all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please share your thoughts on the topic of relationships and any lessons that you've learned or things that you live by. And also please let me know if you do enjoy these kind of chit chatty videos. Honestly, I could probably make at least one of these a week besides the main video that I post every week. I just don't know if people enjoy just watching me sitting here talking. So let me know in the comment section and as always, I will see you there.